Okay, today we're going to work with rare objects. Well, as you know, in a deck of cards, jokers are quite rare. There's only two out of the 54 cards altogether. Something that's equally rare are the Fibonacci numbers, if you've heard of those before. Now, those are famous, famous numbers in mathematics and in popular culture, with people claiming that they see evidence of the Fibonacci sequence in just about everything in the natural world. So I thought I would pair those two highly rare things together here. So as you can see, I have four colored jokers and four black and white jokers, okay? And so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just uh, randomly stack these. If you were here, you could tell me, you know, how to do everything actually that I'm going to do. All of these choices are going to be free choices that you can make as the spectator. Okay, you want left on right? That's fine, okay. Now, what I'll do to begin to mix the cards, since uh, both of us <laughs> saw exactly where the jokers were, let's begin to kind of scramble where those jokers are. And then what I thought we would do is perform two very different but highly destructive shuffles when paired together. And this is absolutely a true statement. The left-right shuffle together with the down under or the Australian shuffle are highly destructive to virtually every packet of cards you can imagine. Okay, so um, now a left right shuffle, let me just demonstrate these so you know what you're choosing. So left right is just that uh, with random stacking decided by you, you want left on right, okay. And now the down under, if you haven't seen it before, it's kind of a fun one. Uh, you go down and then the next card goes under down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down. Last one goes on top. Okay, now we can do as many of these shuffles in any order and in any quantity that you would like. Okay, so this is really your choice to completely influence, in many ways, determine the outcome of this, actually. Okay, so which of those two simple but destructive shuffles would you like me to perform first? You want to left, right? Okay. Would you like me to stack left on right or right on left? You want right on left? Okay. Another one of those? Okay, very good. Left on right or right on left? You want right on left again? That's fine. A third, okay. <laughs> left on right or right again? Left on right, okay, very good. And now a down under, okay. Down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down. Last one goes on top. Now, one thing I wanna emphasize is I could actually hand all of this over to you. Doing a left-right shuffle is not too hard to pull off, and the down-under is not too difficult if you just concentrate. So all of the shuffling here could actually be done by you, and I wanna emphasize that, okay? So there's no card handling going on here. There truly isn't. Okay, what else? Another down-under, that's fine. Down, under, down, under, down, under, down. Under, down, under, down, under, down. Last one on top. And then another left, right. Okay, will this be fine if we stop here? You want right on left? Okay. So would you like to do any more? Are you happy? Just one more. Which one? Another down, under? That's fine. Down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down under, down, last one goes on top. Okay, very good. Now, I think you would have to agree that there is no way that anyone could know ahead of time what choices you would make. And your choices very much decide and determine the current ordering of these cards and the placement of those different jokers. But as you can see over here, on the right, <laughs> I have a little written prediction. Little written prediction here. So let's take a look at the written prediction. How could I have written anything 
that would anticipate the packet structure after the random choices made by you. Well, let's just see. What, what does my written prediction say? To separate the two sets of four of a kind, so we had two colored jokers, two black and white, deal the cards in the non-trivial Fibonacci positions, so two, three, five, eight, into their own pile. Okay, so once again, what's the very first Fibonacci number? I believe it's one. In fact, the sequence is uh, one, one, two, three, five, eight. So the rule is the next Fibonacci number in the sequence is found by adding the previous two. Okay, so and of course you have to begin the sequence. So we start with one, one. So the non-trivial ones are the ones that are of interest here, namely two and larger. So what is this saying here? There's no way that this could possibly be true. So it is saying that if we deal off the cards in position two, three, five, eight into their own pile, we will have separated the different jokers. Okay, well, let's just check that here. So to spread these out, so you can clearly see that I'm following the instructions here of this prediction. Okay, so position two, this is position one. Position two is right there, okay. Oh yeah, position three as well. Two and three go together. Maybe I'll pull these down because the paper's bent. Okay, so positions two, three, okay, and then what else? Uh, five, that's four, and then five. And then what's the remaining? We only need one more. Uh, eight. Eight's the very last card since we have eight. So that's position two, three, five, eight. So let me pull these out. One, four, six, seven, I think, or something. So we're claiming that we have separated these two kinds of jokers. Oh, I can't imagine what the chances of this would be that we would be successful. Okay, well, we may have succeeded. <laughs> so we have a, a color one here, a black and white. A color one here, another black and white. Uh, we're doing okay. Oh, wow, we are getting close here. We have three color ones and three black and white. So as long as we haven't blown it here, Oh, we did not. We nailed it. Excellent work. You just happened to make a series of random choices that led to my prediction, which was written before we even began all of this, to be true. You are an amazing choice maker. Or Fibonacci numbers are amazing. They can help us see the future. Okay. Well, okay, so how does this work? Well, you don't need jokers. I guess I should point that out. Um, any two sets of four of a kind will work just fine. Okay, so whatever cards you want to uh, keep together and then separate at the end. Okay, I just figure uh, people don't use jokers very often in magic, so I thought, why not? And they're rare, like Fibonacci numbers. There you go. Okay, so um, it is true you can randomly stack these. Okay, so the first step is essential. So what we're going to do is we're going to very easily convert this packet into a Bessie sequence of order eight. Okay, and the way that we do it, so watch this. So you deal clockwise, one card there, one here, one down here, and you continue dealing in that way, okay? And then you pick up the first pile that began to be, that was being dealt out, right? The first card went in this pile. You pick up that one first and you go in the opposite direction, counterclockwise, pick those up that is guaranteed to convert what we had to a Bessie sequence of order eight. Okay, so what is a Bessie sequence of order eight? Well, this is where you have the cards in a special arrangement, okay? Where cards of one kind are found in the first position, the fourth position, the sixth position, and the seventh. The other cards are found in the 
second, third, fifth, and eighth. Okay, so that you can see the Fibonacci numbers coming into this actually. Okay, now once it's in this organization, this is where the magic really begins. Because as you can learn on my channel, this packet structure and ones of higher order than this one, this is just eight cards, it has a most remarkable property. It is invariant or unharmed or undisturbed by virtually every systematic shuffling procedure used today. So relative to the shuffles that we use that are systematic in nature, this packet now will not be harmed. The structure of the cards will not be destroyed in any way, okay? Now, most any other organization of eight cards will be utterly destroyed by an LR together with a down under. That is absolutely the case. But the Bessie sequence of order eight is undisturbed. It survives that. And many, many other systematic shuffles that I show on my channel, okay? So you can left, right, deal this until the cows come home with random stacking. It won't harm anything. You can do this forever. And then you can do as many down unders as you like, and it won't fundamentally damage the structure of our packet, okay? And so once you've done as many of those as you like, or even additional shuffles that I show on my channel, which you can learn, there's many of them, then at this point, it will be true that if you pull out the cards in the second, third, these are the two Fibonacci values, fifth and eighth, those will be of one kind. And then the others, in position one, four, six, seven, will be in the other positions, okay? So here we go, those are all of one kind, and these are all of one kind, and you've just now performed true mathematical magic. So thank you for watching, and take a look at other videos on my channel. I will include links to videos teaching you about Bessie sequences and the amazing things you can do once you've organized a packet of cards to have this very special arrangement. You can just put it through tremendous mixing and it won't harm anything. And you'll have complete knowledge as to where things are. And so you can really create just countless card effects using Bessie sequences of order eight. There are some of order 16, we call them quasi Bessie sequences. There's Bessie sequences of order 32 and so forth. So powers of two, okay? So anyway, thank you again for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.